Yo everyone, welcome to our deep dive into the world of Bleach, a classic shonen action anime series known for its intense fighting scenes. Despite the fierce battles, there's surprisingly little killing involved. This trend is common among the big three shonen series, which are often hesitant to kill off their heroes. This reluctance allows fans to feel secure knowing their favorite characters will likely survive until the end. Sometimes, even the villains benefit from this plot armor, enabling them to be redeemed or to disappear, never to return. Throughout Bleach, especially during the Erenkar saga and the Thousand Year Blood War arcs, many villains met their demise. However, the same couldn't be said for the heroes. The series is rife with plot armor, which is often quite transparent. There are moments when characters devise clever plans to escape death or they are spared for crucial plot and character development reasons. At other times, their survival seems more whimsical, almost as if the enemies understand that fans want to see more of these beloved characters. So, let's explore some of these moments of plot armor in Bleach and understand why these characters were spared. Join us as we unravel the reasons behind these storytelling choices and their impact on the series. Starting off at number 10, we have Ichigo Kurosaki, whose inner hollow serves as tireless plot armor in Bleach. Unsurprisingly, protagonist Ichigo Kurosaki benefits from a lot of plot armor. As it is common in shonen anime, our hero must survive to the very end and win all the most important battles. Ichigo's luck is evident from his earliest encounters. He barely survives his battle against Grand Fisher and somehow manages to defeat tough opponents like Renji, Ikaku, and even the formidable Kenpachi. As a rookie swordsman, only his protagonist powers could have allowed him to emerge victorious against such strong foes. But most notably, Ichigo's plot armor shines during his final battle against Yulik Yura Cypher at Lost No Chase. Yulik Yura outright kills Ichigo, but thanks to his inner hollow, Ichigo returns to life, assuming the form of a horned Vasto Lord. In this new form, he's able to fight and defeat Yulik Yura as an equal. Later, we see this plot armor in action again when Yuha Wak tries to capture and control Ichigo. Just as things look grim, Yuha Wak's time limit conveniently expires, forcing him to return to Silburn. Ichigo Kurosaki's journey is a prime example of how plot armor can shape a hero's story, ensuring they survive and triumph against all odds. Coming in at number 9, we have Rukia Kachiki, whose sheer luck and plot armor kept her alive on Sokayaka Hill. Rukia found herself in dire straits during the Soul Society arc. Arrested and charged for giving Ichigo her powers, she was sentenced to execution. It seemed like her fate was sealed. On the day of her execution, she was brought to Sokayaka Hill, ready to meet her end. But in true dramatic fashion, Ichigo Kurosaki swooped in at the last possible moment, saving Rukia's life and proving that plot armor was on her side. Rukia's luck didn't stop there. Later on, Aizen extracted the Hogyoku from her but inexplicably didn't finish her off, despite his overwhelming power. This critical moment allowed Rukia to survive and continue her journey. Her plot armor was tested again when she faced Araniero Arurie. The odds were against her, but thanks to Araniero's mistakes and Rukia's last-minute ice blade, she narrowly escaped a grim fate. Rukia Kachiki's survival through these life-threatening moments showcases how plot armor can turn the tide in favor of our beloved characters, allowing them to continue their adventures. At number 8, we have Chad. Ichigo's loyal friend, Chad, often found himself lagging behind in terms of power. Despite this, he managed to survive some truly deadly encounters thanks to some seriously thick plot armor. First, let's talk about the Soul Society arc. Chad faced off against the formidable Captain Shonsui Kairaku. Shonsui, known for his laid-back demeanor but deadly skills, could have easily ended Chad's life. In fact, Lieutenant Nanao was ready to finish Chad off, but Shonsui decided to spare him and allowing Chad to live another day. Then, during the Erenkar saga, Chad's plot armor was put to the test once more. He went up against Noi Tora Gilga, the fifth Espada in Las Noches. Noi Tora, notorious for his ruthlessness, could have effortlessly killed Chad. However, he deemed Chad unworthy of his effort and decided to leave him be. These moments highlight how Chad's plot armor played a crucial role in his survival, allowing him to stay in the game despite the overwhelming odds. On our list at number 7, we have Momo Hinamori, who miraculously survived Aizen's wrath not once, but twice. Momo Hinamori starts off as the lieutenant of Squad 5, making her Captain Sosuke Aizen's direct subordinate. She's also Aizen's biggest admirer, which leads to a devastating betrayal. When Aizen seemingly returns from the dead, Momo lets her guard down, only to be stabbed by Aizen while they're alone. By all accounts, Momo should have died, 
and even Aizen thought so too. But Bleach had other plans. Against all odds, Momo survives and returns to fight in the fake Karakura town battle. She teams up with Ringiku to take on Haribel's three fractions, showing her resilience and combat skills. However, Momo's misfortune strikes again when Aizen deceives Toshiro Hitsugaya, leading him to brutally stab Momo, mistaking her for Aizen himself. Twice, Momo nearly meets her end due to Aizen's schemes, yet plot armor allows her to survive both harrowing incidents. Momo Hinamori's miraculous survivals highlight the unpredictable and often cruel twists of fate in the world of Bleach. On number 6 we have Grim Jiao Jiger Jax. In the world of Bleach, Ichigo Kurosaki and his shonen-style rival, Grim Jiao Jiger Jax, have a fiery history. Grim Jiao's sole ambition was to defeat Ichigo in a fair fight, leading to three intense clashes between these powerful swordsmen. Deep in the heart of Las Noches, Ichigo finally bested Grim Jiao using his hollow mask and Bankai. Yet, in true Ichigo fashion, he chose not to deliver the final blow, sparing Grim Jiao's life. Grim Jiao, despite his defeat, wanted to continue the battle, but Ichigo refused, simply telling him to leave. Things took a dramatic turn when the fifth Espada, Noi Tora, appeared, intent on finishing off Grimjow. In an unexpected twist, Ichigo stepped in to protect his rival. He blocked Noi Tora's attack, ensuring Grimjow's survival. This act of mercy by Ichigo means that Grimjow lives to see another day. He will return in the upcoming Thousand Year Blood War arc, not as a foe, but as Ichigo's reluctant ally. This moment highlights Ichigo's deep aversion to killing and sets the stage for more exciting developments in their complex relationship. Coming in at number 5, we have the story of Tyr Haribel, the third Espada. In the Erenkar saga, many of the Erenkars met their end, including almost all of the current Espadas. Grimjow managed to survive thanks to Ichigo's mercy, but Haribel's survival was a different story. During the battle, Aizen lost patience with the remaining Espada's inconsistent performance and turned on Haribel, striking her down. Despite falling to the ground, Haribel survived and made her way back to Hueco Mundo, the desolate desert world, where she assumed the role of queen. However, 17 months later, Yuha Wak and his Quin Shi army invaded. Haribel bravely stayed behind to hold off Yuha Wak's forces while her friends fled. Fortunately, Yuha Wak captured Haribel alive rather than killing her. Despite her survival, Haribel's storyline remained unresolved in the manga, leaving her fate as a loose end. On our list at number 4 is Nell. Once upon a time, Nellil II Odelschwank, also known as Nell, held the prestigious rank of the Third Espada. Her rivalry with the then Eighth Espada, Noitora Gilga, was anything but friendly. In their many sparring matches, Nelial consistently outperformed Noitora, igniting a dark envy within him. Unable to accept his losses, Noitora teamed up with Sailaporo to orchestrate a sinister plan. They set off an unseen device, causing a massive explosion in Nelial's room. Amidst the chaos, Noitora struck a devastating blow, slicing open Nelial's head and causing her spirit energy to seep out. But instead of delivering the final blow, Noitora made a surprising decision. He abandoned Nelial in the vast, desolate sands of Hueco Mundo. Severely weakened, Nelial transformed into a toddler form, seemingly left to fate. Why didn't Noitora finish her off? It wasn't out of mercy or compassion. It was a twist of fate, ensuring Nelial's survival so that she could cross paths with our protagonist, Ichigo Kurosaki, later in the series. This pivotal moment wasn't just about Noitora's cruelty. It was a key plot device that set the stage for future events. Nelial's story added depth and intrigue, enriching the world of Bleach and making her a beloved character among fans. Coming in at number three is Bayakuya Kuchiki. Captain Bayakuya Kuchiki has always had his fair share of plot armor. When he was an antagonist, it was there, but it became even more prominent when he turned into a hero. Remember that time when Bayakuya survived Jin's Shikai attack while defending Rukia? Given his injuries, Jin and Aizen could have easily finished him off, but they didn't. Fast forward to the Thousand Year Blood War arc. Bayakuya faced off against Stern Ritter F. as not, who stole his Bankai. Using the stolen Bankai, as not brutally beat Bayakuya, leaving him on the brink of death. But, against all odds, Bayakuya miraculously survived and made a full recovery, thanks to the help of Squad Zero. It's moments like these that highlight just how much plot armor plays a role in keeping our favorite characters in the fight. Coming in at number two, we have Yuryu. Yuryu Ishida, known for his skill and determination, often emerged victorious through his own efforts. However, there was one encounter where sheer plot armor was his saving grace. During the intense battle at Las Noches, 
Ichigo Kurosaki had just been struck down by Yulik Yura. In a fit of rage and desperation, Yuryu charged at the fourth espada, only to be effortlessly swatted away. Yulik Yura, showcasing his overwhelming power, could have easily ended Yuryu's life but chose instead to sever Yuryu's hand. But this wasn't the end for Yuryu. As luck, or rather plot armor, would have it, Ichigo's own miraculous comeback in his Vasto Lord form turned the tide. Revived and more powerful than ever, Ichigo engaged Yulik Yura in a fierce battle, indirectly saving Yuryu from certain death. Interestingly, this moment of plot armor didn't just extend to Yuryu. Orihime Inoue, who was also present, benefited from Ichigo's dramatic return. Ichigo's resurgence ensured that his friends were spared from Yulik Yura's second release, a true testament to the interconnected fates of our beloved characters. So there you have it, how Yuryu Ishida's life was spared by the thinnest thread of plot armor during one of Bleach's most intense battles. At number one, we have Captain Mayuri. Captain Mayuri Kuratsuchi of Squad 12 is known for his scientific genius and his unpredictable nature. Throughout Bleach, he's achieved some jaw-dropping victories, defeating formidable foes like Sailaporo Grants and Jizuru Ju Eru. However, early in the series, even Mayuri needed some plot armor to avoid a crushing defeat. During his intense battle with Yuryu Ishida, Mayuri faced an overwhelming final attack from Yuryu. Not even his living Bankai could shield him from Yuryu's sheer power. It looked like the end for Mayuri, but he had one last trick up his sleeve. In a desperate move, Mayuri melted down his severely injured body into an indestructible green ooze. This ooze seeped away, allowing Mayuri to escape and recover elsewhere. Yuryu was left stunned, realizing he had seriously underestimated Mayuri's ability to cheat death. This escape wasn't just about survival. It showcased how the power of science and Mayuri's relentless cunning can provide him with seemingly endless plot armor. No matter how dire the situation, Mayuri always has a trick to help him win or at least slip away from the jaws of defeat. Mayuri's ability to adapt and outthink his opponents is what makes him one of the most fascinating characters in Bleach. His perfect escape against Yuryu is a prime example of how his genius and the power of science give him an edge that few can match. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this breakdown, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. Let us know in the comments which bleach moment you'd like us to cover next. See you next time.